Now we've been asked to differentiate sec x with respect to x and show that it equals sec x tan x. And they've given us a clue that they want us to think of sec x as 1 over cos x. So let's start by doing that. This is the same as differentiating with respect to x 1 over cos x. Now we've got a fraction here and I wouldn't advise you to use the quotient rule. It's totally over the top to do it. I mean you can do it if you want but I certainly wouldn't do it. I'd only use the quotient rule if I've got a function of x on the top here and a function of x on the bottom. What you should do is the chain rule. Okay, You should think of this as cos x to the power minus 1. Okay, So we'll just write that in as d by dx of cos x to the power minus 1. Now how do we differentiate cos x to the power minus 1? Well it's by the chain rule as I said earlier. And if you're unfamiliar with the chain rule just go onto my website look at uh, using the chain rule. Now I'm going to differentiate this straight off using the chain rule as I would encourage you to do. Okay, If you're not sure exactly what I've done I will go through this slowly at the end. Okay, So we'll just run through this. Bear with me if you are struggling with this part. Um, as I say I'll explain it at the end. But whoops, don't do that. Okay, What you must do okay, is call this t so we've got t to the power minus 1. And if you differentiate t to the power minus 1, you'll get minus 1 times t to the minus 2. So that becomes minus 1 times t, which is cos x, to the power minus 2. Okay. And then what you need to do is we took t to be cos x. You then times this answer by the differential of t. So we need to differentiate cos x with respect to x and that gives minus sine x. So that's what I would do okay and it would be done in one step like that. Now assuming that you're okay with that we just need to tidy this up. We've got minus and a minus here so that's going to be a plus so we can ignore that. Now we've got cos x to the minus 2 and that's the same as 1 over cos x all squared. Or I could write it as cos squared x. And then we've got this sine x so I'll just pop that there. Now we can think of this as 1 over cos x times another 1 over cos x. And that other 1 over cos x can be multiplied with the sine x to give us sine x over cos x. And now 1 over cos x is better known as sec x and sin x over cos x better known as tan x. And there you have it. OK? What we had to prove. Now I did say that i will take you through differentiating cos x to the power minus 1 in case you're not able to do it straight off like this. So what we'll do, just come down here and I'll run through it for you. So if we were to say let y okay, equal cos x okay, to the power minus 1. Okay, and if we were also to say let t equal the cos x, then what we've got is instead of y equaling cos x to the minus 1, it's now y equals t in place of the cos x t to the power minus 1. So therefore we have y equals t to the minus 1. Now what we're going to do is use the chain rule in order to find the differential of this with respect to x. We're going to find dy by dx. So dy by dx, if you're using the chain rule, is dy by d something times the same d something over dx. So what is that d something? Well in this example it's dt. dt there, dt there. It's as if these two dt's cancel out leaving you with dy by dx. So we've got to work out dy by dt. Now y equals t to the minus 1 so therefore 
dy by dt would equal minus 1 times t to the power minus 2. And what is this? Well, we know that t stands for cos x, so we've got minus cos x all to the power minus 2. That's what we wrote here, okay? Minus 1, if you like, minus cos x to the minus 2. Same as this bit, dy dt. So we've got this part. Let's just put that in. Minus cos x to the power minus 2. Now we've got to multiply it by dt dx. We've got to times it by the differential of the thing we nominated for t. Well, we nominated in this example t equaling cos x. So therefore dt by dx would equal minus sin x. So we need to take this and multiply it with dy by dt, this term here. So that's going to be minus sin x. So hopefully you can see how I got this answer. All right. Anyway, so I would encourage you anyway to try and learn to do the chain rule straight off because it does save you an awful lot of time if you think you've got to work all this lot out. Okay, so uh, there you go. That brings us anyway to the end of the first part of this question.